Right, so here's the working on screen display. You can see if I tilt my airframe and get my artificial horizon moving. And I can switch flight modes and get that display happening. All nice, but what I really want to do is talk about, and again, it's very hard to actually film this so it looks good, the inbuilt menu of the on-screen display. To access it, while you're in disarm mode, right, we go up a little bit of lift throttle, right your and pitch forward, and we get into the inbuilt uh, menu of the on-screen display. And this I find is probably one of the best features of the actual iOSD. Um, you can see here we can actually move through this menu page for instance and adjust our PIDs from the on-screen display. Now I'm just going to exit that and come back into it again because I changed something I didn't want to. So we can adjust all of our PIDs on the first page which is really cool. Very handy for at the field um, tuning. If we your left or right we get to a different page. Uh, the second page after PID tuning is your RC tuning. So you've got your rates, your exponential, um, throttle, TPA, that sort of stuff there. Your rate etc etc etc. Again really handy. The next thing I wanted to come to was this page which is um, how to set your voltage and it's really cool because what I can actually do is I've actually got at the top of the screen there the actual voltage reading coming through and all I have to do is scroll up to adjust volts and I can go left or back and look at a multimeter that's attached to my LiPo and make the two numbers the same. So much easier to set up. As I said before, you can also um, select your other options for the voltage display from this window as well. So, very handy. Okay, moving on to the next page, which is RSSI. This is the best feature of the lot. I think in this new OSD, which is how we actually set up the actual OSD, uh, the sensitivity of the um, RSSI. And it's really simple, okay? With your radio about one or two meters away from the airframe, you pop up here where it says RSSI, so RSSI and you, you're right, and you get a countdown. Once that countdown drops below 10, turn your radio off and let it keep going. Now, you see my radio is off. I've got a zero at the top there. Turn my radio on. And I've got 100% of my RSSI feed. Near enough. Cover the antenna a bit, the number drops. Let go of the antenna, my RSSI works very nicely. That is just such a nice way of setting that up. I'm really, Gary Shikra, you really did a brilliant bit of work on that one. Okay, next page, the current sensor. And again, here I get to tweak that adjustment. Um, now I go through what I do and don't want to display. Most of the options are here. So you can, if you want, pretty much skip the GUI and do most of the setup of the on-screen display through its own menu, except loading the font. That's really the only thing you still need the GUI for, is the font loading. Okay. Uh, and here we have advanced features, our metric units, our reference voltage. As I said, you need to set that voltage reference to 5 volts if you're running more than 4S. And you have to do a restart on the GUI 
to enable that. So just be aware of that if you ever change it. And one of my very, very favorite features, magnetic calibration. Basically, if I now you're right, that will start a countdown from 10, which gives me 10 seconds before the MagCal starts, and then it will trigger the MagCal, and I've got my 30 seconds to flip the airframe in all three axes. I can actually go in the middle of a field, in the middle of nowhere, away from everything magnetic, radio, what have you, all sorts of electrical interference, and do my MagCal at the field through this. I love that feature. Gotta say, I can't say it enough how much I love that feature. And the final page is the statistics. Trip, maximum distance. Now trip is how far the airframe went during the flight. Maximum distance was the furthest distance away from you. So if you think of it going out and circling you, the circle would be the um, circumference of the circle. Trip would be the circumference. Max distance would be the radius of that circle. Okay? Maximum altitude, maximum speed. A lot of guys getting very excited about that. And what your flight time actually was. Now that page, every time you arm the airframe and then disarm the airframe, you will get that statistics page. And it will stay there until you just add just a tiny bit of throttle and the statistics page disappears. Okay, and isn't that cool? You can see that call sign that I entered pop up. So I know that is my vampire or anybody else who happens to be looking in on this particular frequency will see that they're actually watching the video from Deet's vampire. And that will actually vanish in a second. That'll go away because I didn't select to have that on all the time. There it is, timing out and going away. So, very cool. Alright guys, I'll see you online.